should be prominent for both clubs today. Wearing that number for Kansas is Calvin Thompson, one of the great outside shooters in the Big 8 Conference. He's a 52% career field goal percentage shooter, as I said, most of them from outside. He's been on a roll in double figures the last five ball games. And for Iowa State, Barry Stevens, their senior co-captain, Iowa State's all-time scorer, with the big story on him, he's been not been shooting the ball well lately. Over nine, only nine of his last 36, Johnny Orr needs some offensive output out of Barry Stevens. We have two good shooting teams this year. There's Johnny Orr in his fifth year as the head coach here at Iowa State. 312 career victories spanning 20 seasons. And Larry Brown will head the Kansas charge in his fourth year as a college coach. And he's won 20 games in each college year. So with the Kansas club shooting 53%, Iowa State shooting 51%, it's going to be a good one this afternoon in Ames. And we'll be back with all the action following this one. We'll have another good crowd at Ames, Iowa this afternoon. They're averaging better than 13,000 per game, and it will be noisy here. Gary, another interesting key matchup in this game. Well, there is those two big guys right there, Sam Hill and Greg Dryling. Sam Hill was having a good game at Kansas when Iowa State had the Jayhawks on the run, fouled out early. That's his big problem. They're probably the two of the most improved players on each of their teams. Dryling coming back, having a great year, both strong rebounders, but Kansas really pounds the board. Sam Hill have to do a good job inside. Both leading uh, are among the leaders in field goal percentage, as you might expect, block shots as well. Right now, let's go to our PA announcer, Gary Ward, for our starting lineup. And the Jayhawks from the University of Kansas. Let's meet the starting lineup for the visiting Jayhawks. At forward, a six foot 11 inch freshman from Lawrence, Kansas, number 25, Danny Manning. <laughs> At forward, a six foot five inch junior from Omaha, Nebraska, number 44, Ron Kellogg. <laughs> At center, a seven foot one inch junior from Wichita, Kansas, number 30, Greg Dryling. <laughs> guard, a six-foot sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska, number 22, Cedric Hunter. And at the other guard, a six-foot, six-inch junior from Kansas City, Kansas, number 35, Calvin Thompson. And now let's meet the starting lineup for your Iowa State Cyclones. At forward, a six-foot, five-inch senior from Flint, Michigan, number 35, Barry The other forward, a six foot five inch freshman from Flint, Michigan, number 44, Jeff Dreyer. At center, a six foot nine inch sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 33, Sam Hill. At guard, a six three and one half inch freshman from Jackson, Michigan, number three, Gary Tompkins. the 
starting lineups for this afternoon's contest. And we'll have the opening tip-off after this message from your local station. The officials for this afternoon's contest. J.C. Lambach from St. Joseph, Missouri. Mike Corey from Oklahoma City. And from Lincoln, Nebraska, Brian Groskup. We're set for first half action. See, Kansas has won four of the last five, including a victory earlier this year. 76-72, that game at Lawrence. Danny Manning had 22 in that one. Barry Stevens also had 22. Another look at the starting five for each club. Driving and Hill to jump center. Ball in the air, and the toss goes to Kansas. This is Cedric Hunter. Cedric Hunter, I feel, just getting better over each game he plays. He's had not, not had that much experience. Driving, excuse me, Gary, driving goes right to the bucket and puts it in, and Kansas goes out in front. And here's the matchup inside. Uh, I'm sure Kansas is going to go down deep as often as they can, and driving getting the hill up in the air early. Iowa State with the basketball. Stevens now out front horn a sec. He's been hot for about the last six or seven outings. Misses his first shot. Driving with the rebound. Kansas back the other way. Thompson baseline, and it will not fall. Rebound to Iowa State. Long pass for Stevens. It will be out of bounds. That's the kind of play for Iowa State and Barry Stevens right now. Could have been a key play. I think Barry's been struggling. As you said in the open, opening, only nine of the last 36. And if he'd have got a easy early basket like that it might have done uh, big things for his confidence Gary Tompkins pass slowed him just a bit too far now Kansas in possession Hunter handling the basketball against Hornacek he's driving on hill and driving dribbles it off his foot and out of bounds now Kansas getting the ball where they'd like to and really deep the driving had uh, uh, Hill uh, backed in inside the paint right where he wanted the shot. Just made the turnover. Tompkins front court for the Cyclones. We might see Iowa State try and run something for Barry Stevens uh, to get him off to a good start. Maybe a, a double pick or screen or something. Uh, look for him to possibly get an early shot. But now we got Kansas in his own. And I look, it looks to me like Kellogg, uh, they got box and one. Kellogg looks like he's playing uh, Stevens head up man for man. Kellogg, of course, an excellent defensive player. Dreyer, and off the glass and in. Jeff Dreyer, the freshman out of Flint, Michigan, makes it a 2-2 ball game. Dreyer can be affected down inside uh, because he was a postman in high school. They thought they had a walk there as Manning gives up the ball to Thompson. Hunter out front for Kansas. 18 minutes to go in the first half, the 2-2 tie. Manning's been struggling a little bit offensively. Not his stats are good, but he's only been getting an average of about five shots a game over the last five uh, games. I look for him to bust out and be a more aggressive offensively. Hunter puts it up and in from about 16. And Kansas again has a two-point lead. They'll apply the pressure as the Cyclones move the ball through the backcourt. Hornacek. Across the timeline. Tompkins. Like looking for Stevens, but can't find him now along the left sideline. I didn't see that uh, first game. I don't remember it with Kansas, but uh, I'm sure this is the first look at the box and one from Kansas uh, on Stevens. Hill missing the jumper. Dreyer could not tip it in, and now we'll have a jump ball. Stevens and Hunter grabbed the ball. Change of possession, it'll be Iowa State's ball. The left hander uh, Hill going up for the shot. Kansas coming to the board, have the cup right in there, but nut blocking off, and Grayer comes right through, able to get it. And then Hunter, good hands. He does a good job here. He settles for the tie because if he rolls over, tries to gain an advantage, it'd be a traveling violation. Side long to the basketball. Hornacek out of the corner, no go, and driving with a rebound. Kansas back the other way. Front court to Thompson. Dryling from Thompson, back to Thompson. The shot rolls the rim and out. Good. Hill with the rebound. 
Good kick out that time by Brian. And they're dropping back. Uh, didn't get a control real well, but Thompson still got the shot. Tompkins misses from about two, and now the other way, and we have a whistle. It'll be a charge against Cedric Hunter. Tompkins established position in a hurry. Well, Hunter, real quick hit. Sometimes maybe a little out of control. You see it come off here. Uh, rebound and out he comes and Thompson comes in to jam him and ha can't control himself he goes for the pass runs right over Gary Tompkins Iowa State gets the basketball back Cyclones down by a couple so Kansas now uh, has come off the box and won Barry Stevens from the corner and he hits that's got to be oh so important for that young man. I know he's been struggling. Uh, Johnny Orr, they said he took extra shooting practice yesterday, but the last couple practices was shooting it good. And Kansas throws the ball away. So with the score tied at four, Iowa State will get the basketball back here with 16 minutes left to go in the first half. We'll be right back after this. Let's look at the Kansas road record, five and three on a neutral court. The Jayhawks are three and two. And Iowa State at home this year in double figures in the victory department, 10 and three. Iowa State with those nine losses, seven of them have come to teams who were ranked at the time, but they've been in a slump now, having lost their last three, uh, trying to find the, the magic to turn it around. Cyclones have the basketball on the Kansas turnover. The inbound to Barry Stevens. It's a good game. It's a tough game for Iowa State to break out of it against Kansas, ranked number 10. But on the other hand, the tradition of Kansas and ranked number 10, it gives you some extra incentive to come out and play well. Tompkins misses the shot. Thompson comes away with a basketball for Kansas. This is low, and it goes up and in. Good Danny Manning. Good job by Kansas of getting down low on the blocks, and they're really pounding it inside. And uh, it'll be a tough job for Iowa State if they continue to be able to get the ball that deep. Kansas by two. Twenty second trouble for a moment. Now Tompkins. Well, we saw that box and one early, but now they've dropped off of it. It was Kellogg chasing uh, Stevens. Stevens from long range, and it will not go. Hill backs the ball around. Stevens comes up with it. Low for Greer, baseline. He misses the shot, and Dryley now with a rebound. Dwayne, I think that last time uh, the rebound, the kick out to Stevens, had his shot. But I think it's a case where he's going through. He's not comfortable. He doesn't have the confidence right now. Normally, he'd have shot that second time uh, right away. And he had the shot. It was as good a shot as he'll get. Decides to move, puts it up, rolls off, rebound up and in for Manning, and a whistle underneath. Look, it's going to count. Fox stops at 14.35. Manning a little hesitant. We've talked about him has been aggressive offensively. He hesitated out there, came in, didn't get the shot, but good aggressive follow-up here, and hustle gets him two and a chance maybe to get three as you look at Larry Brown. Brown is on Sam Hill, and he's been a nemesis for Hill this year. Manning's shot is good. The Kansas now assumes a 9-4 lead. That's five points for Manning. Kansas has been putting on uh, full court pressure. Uh, they're in a 2-2-1 situation trap. Across the timeline, Tompkins to Hornacek. Stevens on the right side. Greer. Well, right there, they kicked in on the zone, and Tompkins needed to move and shorten up where he might be in position to shoot the ball, even though he doesn't shoot it that much outside. At least be a threat, make a man come to him and respect him. One second move, drops it off, and the ball is deflected out of bounds, belonging to Iowa State. I think it was Manning who got a hand on the ball for Kansas. You look at Larry Brown. He substitutes an awful lot, maybe from his... Uh, uh, experience with Dean Smith down in North Carolina. He played there, assistant coach, and uh, so far they have not had a sub in the game. Hill over driving short. Thompson with a rebound. Kicks it out to Hunter. Now down the court it goes. And a shot by Kellogg misses. Back the other way. Dreyer to Hornacek for Iowa State. Hornacek inside the lane, and he was slapped as he crossed the free throw line. A whistle and a foul against Cedric Hunter. Well, there was a great play down the other end uh, with Kellogg. He ducked in behind his man, took it up underneath, didn't get the shot, but now we see Hornacek back down the other end and the hands doubling up on him. Cedric Hunter reaches in, slaps him across the wrist, and Iowa State inbound. Dreyer on the inbound, right to the bucket up and in. Jeff Dreyer with four. 
six. Iowa State down by three. Three are strong kids, 6'5", 195. You know, the two freshmen on this Iowa State club are the ones that really have to play the, the important parts. Greer takes the toughest defensive forward, and Tompkins takes the, uh, the offensive forward. Tompkins the best this is offensive Gary, guard. Gary Tompkins, and he makes it a one-point game. First two for Tompkins on the day. It's 9-8 now. And that Kansas lead, which once stood at five, is now only one as a result of this bucket. Iowa State likes the transition. That's a big part of their game. And if you're missing, uh, the opponent's missing, they're able to get out and run. Good job here. Good concentration up on the glass. Kansas turnover gives the ball back to Iowa State. And this is Hornacek out of the corner. So they take advantage of the Kansas mistake. And Iowa State is up by a point, 10-9. Hunter is out for Kansas, and Mark Turgeon is in the game, by the way. And Turgeon moves the ball to driving into the front court. Mark Turgeon came off last year, played great, had a lot of confidence, seems to have lost some of the confidence. Oh, what a slam by the big guy. Well, they're making a point with that one. Kansas out in front by one, 11-10. On a set, front court for Iowa State. Stevens out of that corner, and it rolls off, but we have a pushing foul underneath. It's going to be against Hill. That'll be the second on him. Hill has fouled out four times this year, and more than that has been in foul trouble that limits his effectiveness. Well, the four times he's fouled out, Dwayne has been in the conference. I'm sure he's had eight uh, games where he's fouled out. And I look at it, those are foolish fouls where a guy has to stay in the game. Uh, if you're going to make a foul, you need to make it where it's going to contribute something or keep something from scoring or blocking a guy away from getting the ball. But he has a lot of fouls uh, that I think are really kind of the silly type fouls. Kansas moving the ball into the front court. We have a whistle and a push away from the ball. A foul against Iowa State. Foul against Gary Tompkins, his first. Kellogg on the inbound. Mark Turgeon. Turgeon has not scored in the last couple ball games. Not seen as much action because Cedric Hunter has been playing good. And there's Manning on the board. Manning on the tip end, following the shot by Thompson. So Manning gets two more. You know, the boards, you think of Kansas as a big club and a good board team, but on the year, they only have a rebound margin of about two a game. But in the last uh, 11 games, they have out-rebounded their opponents by eight uh, eight times. Uh, so they're coming on strong and doing a much better job of rebounding here in the second part of the season. Hornacek for Iowa State. Tompkins dishes off to Hornacek down near the left corner. Hornacek back out front to Tompkins. Good pass inside. Rare to the bucket. It will not roll for him. Hill with the rebound, and he drops it through. Sam Hill. Even though Grayer is uh, not a big guy, 6'5", he's so quick and beats the, some of the big people up, I think he can be effective uh, on the inside of that zone. It looks like they've tried to go to it. And just leading by one. This is Turgeon. He will put it up. It rolls off. Thompson battling Grayer for the rebound, and Grayer will be assessed with a foul. Jeff Grayer charged with a foul, stopping the clock 11-19. With the score, Kansas 13, Iowa State 12. We'll take a timeout and be right back after this. Wednesday, Colorado plays at Oklahoma and Kansas State at Kansas renew their interstate rivalry in Lawrence. The midweek action ends Thursday night when Iowa State plays in Nebraska. Follow the action all the way to the postseason tournament, March 8th and 9th in Kansas City by attending a game in your area. Both clubs not shooting as well as they do on the season. Kansas 6 of 14, 46 percent. They're a 53 percent shooting club. Iowa State a cold 35 percent, 6 of 17. They're running 51 as a club. When the 10 guys that started this ball game, Dwayne, all 10 starters shot 50 percent or over from the field. Shot by Calvin Thompson will not go out away from the ball. We have a foul charge to Danny Manning of Kansas. That's his first. And he gives the ball back to Iowa State. That's the third team foul against Kansas. Iowa State playing currently with four team fouls. And fouls for the sensational freshman uh, Manning has been a problem the last two games. He sat out a lot of time, which accounts for some of his low scoring output. Greer with the ball in the Iowa State front court. Now Tompkins. Kansas there uh, looks like 1-3-1 one, one and uh, doubling up. Greer forcing his way to the bucket against Dryling, and we get a whistle out of all that. I think Iowa State taking advantage of a situation now where they're trapping, and they're a little soft and inside, not packed. See all the room that he's got in that zone, takes it up. He's strong, takes the ball up away, does a good job, draws the foul on Dryling, and Grayer and all 
Stater out of Michigan uh, was voted the player of the year by the, the Michigan high school coaches. Where a 69% foul shooter misses his first one. That's the first foul against Dryling in this game. Well, that's what he's done. I was talking to Larry Brown before the game. I said, Larry, I don't know what you've done to that guy. But it used to be uh, you could count five or six minutes in the game and sit down driving because he'd have three fouls. So he's really worked with him. Greer ties the game at 13. Kellogg moves into the front court for Kansas. Out front for Turgeon. Calvin Thompson. Kansas moving the ball around. Thompson. Jumper from the right side is good. The bank that when he gets that wide open. It's a good pick down. And uh, Calvin has said he's been shooting the ball just X the last four or five ball games against Missouri the other night. Uh, Tuesday night he was 8 for 16. 15-13 Kansas. Iowa State handling the basketball. Stevens left sideline. In the same zone, Kansas played 2-3, but then they flex into that 1-3-1 one, one into a matchup situation. Intersect with a move around Manning had the ball slapped away from behind, belonging to Iowa State. Look at Johnny Orr and one of his assistants, Jim Hellahan, who's done a good job for Johnny. Hornacek from long range puts it up and in. Hornacek with four. That knocks the game at 15. Darling with a pass to Manning across the midcourt strike. Calvin Thompson. Turgeon underneath. A nice feed to Manning up and in. Beautiful pass. Turgeon's led this club in assists all, uh, till the fast. Uh, uh, game down at uh, Missouri, and finally uh, Cedric Hunter's taken over that lead uh, by about three assists. Hopkins on to Stevens, base Good block. shot blocked by Dryling. Back the other way, Kansas with the ball. Turgeon, Dryling top of the key. Dryling the second leading shot blocker in the Big Eight. Uh, Hill, as you mentioned, uh, third, and the leader has to be Joe Atkinson at uh, Oklahoma State. Dryling to the bucket again inside, and that's six for him. 19-15, Kansas on top. Dryling a lot stronger than Hill inside, but they are really working that, and uh, that helps the percentage uh, when you get that kind of shot. Hopkins. Iowa State stringing uh, the zone offense attack now. They're actually in a 1-4 situation. Greer takes it to the bucket, it'll drop. 19-17. Kansas by two. Turgeon, front court for Kansas. Riley. Turgeon once more. Manning right side. Tough job for Grayer inside there on Manning. 6'5 to 6'11, and Manning has been moved so well, and he gets a rebound. Turgeon misses out of the corner. Grayer rebound, long pass to Hornacek. Turgeon back, and Hornacek shot will not go, and a whistle and a foul coming against Mark Turgeon. his first. Ted Boyle enters the game now. Again, Iowa State always looking to look down court and uh, get the transition game. And usually when they're winning games, uh, they're scoring uh, maybe 8 to uh, 10, 14 points a ball game out of that particular phase of the game. That shot is good. He's only hitting 84% of his shots from the line this year. So you're looking at a premier foul shooter in Jeff Hornacek. First in the Big 8 conference right now. He converts them both. Game is tied at 19. He's the kind of player, Jeff Hornacek, I think that every coach in the league uh, would be glad to have him on the club. An intelligent player, can shoot it outside, great passer, giving up some assists this year because of the freshman Tompkins handling more of the ball and the way they've gone to a two-out guard set. Turgeon down to Boyle, denied the baseline, back to Turgeon, right side. Kellogg against Stevens, and Stevens caught hold of Stevens, his first, and it stops the clock at 7.59. The score is tied. Iowa State 19, Kansas 19, back after this. 19 with 7.59 left in the first half. There's the key matchup. Dryling with six points. Hill, two. See the rebounding department. 
They've been able to go inside with Dryling, Gary. Well, they have. He's got three buckets, six points, and uh, this was his first, I think, basket of the game where he rolls inside, got Hill up. All uh, three baskets have been stuffs, and uh, he's tough inside. And his footwork, I think, is better this year, too. As you see on the play there, last year a lot of times he tried and, and make the move and uh, shuffled his feet and got called for traveling a lot. Married, got a little daughter. Uh, Jill, I think, is her name. Kansas has the basketball. Mark Turgeon inbounding baseline. Kellogg, right side up and in for Ron Kellogg. First two points, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for Kellogg. Uh, and Saturdays have been his game. The last three Saturdays they've played, he's had 30-point ball games. So Kansas fans uh, delight in that fact that it looks like uh, Saturday is Ron Kellogg's day. 30-point games, and he's been shooting better than 70% from the floor on Saturdays the last three times out. Hornacek, oh, Hornacek out of that corner. There's another fellow who's been very hot. Hornacek, in his last five games, has hit 60% from the floor. When they drop back uh, double team Hill. I, I'd almost rather get, give Hill the shot inside than I put Hornacek an outside shot as hot as he's been. Kellogg again out of the corner. It's a 23-21 ball game. Kansas out in front. Hill front court for Iowa State. Stevens low for Hill. The jumper is short. Ball to Dryling. Now Turgeon. Turgeon looking down court for Kellogg. It's a baseline right. Puts up the jumper. Loose ball picked up by Stevens. Now to Hornacek. Hornacek stops, tries to force it inside to Stevens. We have a little pushing going on, but the ball goes out of bounds and belongs to Kansas is the call. Now we got to see Johnny Hoare holding his head. We've got conferring here where Mike Corey might have seen the call. And so it's overruled. They changed their minds, and the ball will belong to Iowa State. Well, I saw Mike Corey heading right to uh, Gross Cup. Let's see the play here. You see, it was Tad Boyle there uh, getting a hand from behind, looked like, unless Stevens would have happened to hit it, but Mike Corey uh, thought that he had the angle and uh, ruled otherwise. Here's Stevens, a move now toward the bucket off the glass. Won't go, but look who is in there. Hornacek to tip it in. and the game is tied at 23. Well, he's a real competitor. He plays the ball all the way. Manning throws the ball away for Kansas over Turgeon's head. It goes back to Iowa State. Two good uh, rebounding guards in this ball game. Hornacek right there going on the offense ball. Of course, Calvin Thompson for Kansas gets a lot of boards. Thompson in the ball game now. Move the turnover situation. Kansas with five. Kansas did this in the Missouri game in the first uh, part half particularly. Uh, came out and turned the ball over a fast break situation. Sam Hill's jumper gives Iowa State a two-point lead. Now Thompson steals the ball, knocks it away, but it goes out of bounds. Calvin Thompson got it away from Turgeon, but could oh. not corral it. Uh, Stevens, I, we talked about numbers. They're both 35 here. Do we? here. <laughs> there you see the accident. It looks like it rolls off Barry's hand as I pick it up. And then, of course, steps out of bounds before he can release it and save it back in. Oh. Barry Stevens couldn't control it. The ball goes to Kansas. This is Calvin Thompson. Front court for Kansas. Low from Manning. Underneath. Now out front. Boyle. footer good over Grayer. The game is again tied at 25. Hornacek to Hill, front court Tompkins, and he is fouled by Calvin Thompson. Five minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first half. Foul against Calvin Thompson, his first. Sixth team foul against the Jayhawks. In those situations where we're getting pressure, uh, traps and whatnot, it's important. Tom could probably save possession, picked up the foul. You have to go meet the basketball. Tompkins swabs it up there for Stevens, and it goes out of bounds, belonging to Kansas. Well, the Jayhawks get the ball. Inbound to Manning. Iowa State pressure has caused some turnovers, as we saw earlier, there, five uh, to one in favor of Iowa State. And Boyle, the Turgeon, low for Dryling, and Dryling puts it off the glass, won't go. Dreyer comes away with it for the Cyclones. Now Hornacek, 
six. Stevens right side. Bates now is shot from 15. Good. Barry Stevens. That gives him six. He needs another bucket to hit the 2,000 mark. Driving a good job of staying, staying down on the initial uh, pump fake, but just does not have the quickness to stay with the Barry Stevens. Iowa State by two, 27-25, with 4.22 left in the half. Calvin had the shot. That night. He turned it down. It seemed like they are a little hesitant. He turns it down, and Kansas turns it over. Ball goes back to Iowa State. Saw the Kansas staff there, uh, Bob Hill and... John Calipari to the assistants. Ron Virgil is in the game now for the Cyclones. Hornacek with a pass into the corner. Stevens out of the corner, rolls off. Manning with a rebound. Iowa State fans, as they look for that, Stevens likes the baseline shot. Never, he can get that open. They usually look for that to be two points. Virgil looking traffic over. Calvin Thompson spins, goes inside. Partially rejected by Hill. Ball picked up by Greer. Now Ron Virgil. One sec. Top of the key. Looking inside. They had success there for a while. Uh, Kansas revamped a little bit on the zone. Uh, not as much space on the inside of that zone. They're off to Stevens, and he is fouled on the attempted block. I think they're going to call Boyle for the foul. There's Barry, the pump fake, getting Manning up in the air, and Boyle, or Dryling. They're going to charge Manning, I think. Got him from behind. It'll be his second foul, and send Barry Stevens to the line. Stevens, practically an 80% shooter from the free throw line, and puts it up and in. Manning with his size and quickness right there. Uh, the pump fake, Barry got him up. He needs to stay down because his size and jumping ability, he's going to get up and be able to bother that shooter even if he does go out. Iowa State by three. Stevens makes it four. He hits the 2,000 mark, by the way. And Iowa State leads 29-25. We'll take a break and be right back after this. AB Sports. Stay tuned for the Oklahoma-Missouri game immediately following our game over most of these same stations. We'll double-check our stat sheet here. One at uh, Stevens with eight, the other with six, and I think he has six points, so he is still two points away from hitting the 2,000 mark. He would be only the third league player to do that. That's right, Wayman Tisdale, of course, and uh, he's not going to catch him. And then Mike Evans, uh, is the third player. Uh, Barry Stevens has a chance to catch him. He'd have to average about 20 points a ball game. Uh, Mike Evans had 2,115 points in a great career at Kansas State. Kansas with the basketball. Iowa State leading by four. Surprising thing so far. Iowa State staying with Kansas, rebounding 13 apiece. The turnovers. Kansas has turned it over six times to Iowa State's two. Cedric Cutter in the game for Kansas. Shot. Hill with a rebound. Hornacek. Dreyer out of the corner. And he puts it up and in. So Iowa State takes a 31 to 25 advantage with 2.56 to play in the half. And Iowa State right now, it seems apparently to play, be playing pretty loose, and they're taking that shot when it's there. On the other hand, I thought Kansas kids several times been turning down 15 footers a little bit hesitant because they probably have been uh, geared coming in this game to look inside at which they've had some success but Iowa State pounding that defense in there a little bit tighter right now well looking for Dryling Dryling has a shot rejected but we have a whistle on a foul coming here against Jeff Grayer clock stops at 229 Iowa State's been uh, some zone. Now they've been aggressive last two times, man for man. Dialing down in there with it behind. Dreyer coming across to help as he gets away from uh, Hill. And what Hill needs to do, in my opinion, is keep him on the blocks, hold him out there, not look to get that shot, but make him turn to hit the turnaround jumper. Well, Brad Dudek, the 7-1 sophomore in the game, replacing Hill. is the 
Preston Greiling have been hitting about 71% from the line so far. You know, the 7 1 uh, redshirt sophomore for Iowa State, Dudek, it's an amazing stat on him. He hasn't played that much, keep in mind, but he has 9 for 9 from the field and 2 for 2 from the free throw line on the year. So he's perfect offensively. Greiling, despite the distraction behind him, converts the second one, giving him 7. It's 31 26 now. Look at Stevens to the bucket. It will not go. Rolls off Kellogg back the other way for Kansas. Now Hunter. And there's something we would not have seen driving do last year. He backed away from that thing, let Barry Stevens take a tough shot. Last year he went after and hammered him and picked up a foul. Driving shot will not go. Dudek with the rebound, but he throws it away. Kellogg with the ball. Now Manning and it rolls out. Tad Boyle knocks it out of bounds. So Iowa State comes away with the basketball. Kansas bench, uh, Brown and Hill were applauding to Manny, said, that's all right. But again, I thought it wasn't typical Danny Manny taking the ball and boom and being thinking, I'm going right up for the shot. One sec in the front court, Iowa State leading here, 31-26. Virgil Corner now goes baseline, drops it off underneath, and Grayer puts it up and in. That was a nice pass and a nice bucket. Good job by Grayer uh, going to the open spot. And, of course, Virgil uh, getting the ball through there, finding it. 33-26, Iowa State. Cedric Hunter, the sophomore guard out of Omaha, Nebraska. Now to Manning. Ron Kellogg. Ball slapped away by Virgil. Picked up by Grayer. A pass intended for Stevens. Picked off by Hunter. Back the other way we go. Ron Kellogg with a basketball to Dryling. And Dryling has a shot blocked from behind. And he's fouled by Hornacek. Well, what action there. Iowa State lost uh, a cinch two points. The ball was just underthrown as Larry Brown's making a point. And then Cedric Hunter did a great job of uh, controlling the ball when he was down. And then you come back here and Drowling, Drowling gets hammered by Hornacek. Couldn't see it underneath. Here's the short pass right here. That was two all made. Watch his dribble now. Able to keep it up. Crowd booing, but he does a good job. Sits there. Able to get the ball out. Kellogg coming in here. Here comes Hornacek from high. Grabs him. Look, kind of hangs on. What you couldn't see after that underneath when they went down. Hornacek grabbed him and said to Big Drowley, hey, didn't mean to, and I thought it was a good display of sportsmanship. Drowley converts the first, but now Manning leaves, and Tad Boyle reports back into the contest for Kansas. Drowley, 7-1 junior out of Wichita. this one as well. It's 33-28. That's nine for Dryling so far. His average a little more than 13 and a half a game. State's man-for-man defense and pressure. Uh, I think overall they're, they're going to be a quicker ball club has caused Kansas some problems. They've got in this five-point lead and what just before those free throws was a, a seven-point lead at one time. Less than a minute to play in the first half. One a sec out front. Toss to Stevens. Stevens in that corner again. And he'll put it up. It's good. Stevens hits the 2,000 mark. That's eight for Barry Stevens, and Iowa State leads 35 28. He holds the Coliseum record here, too, of 47 points. And in one game, but he's been a great offensive player, great all-around player for Iowa State in his career as he winds down as a senior. Third player in the history of the Big Eight to hit the 2,000 mark in total points. Kellogg, baseline, in and out. Stevens with the rebound, saves it from going out of bounds at the buzzer. And through the first 20 minutes of play, Iowa State will take a seven-point lead into the locker room at the half. It is Iowa State 35 and Kansas 28 at the half. We'll be right back after this. Damn halftime, but Iowa State has a 35 to 28 halftime lead over the Kansas Jayhawks. Dwayne Stats along with Gary Thompson. Gary, the game started, I think, from the Kansas uh, from the Kansas perspective. Uh, they were able to do pretty much what they wanted to do, is get the ball inside early. They were rebounding well, and uh, as you said, got the ball inside to Dryling, Manning a couple times, and I think this was their game plan. 
uh, after they got into it, Iowa State started to sink a little bit more and jam up the middle and force the outside. And I've really felt that Kansas has been uh, a little hesitant on their shots. And when you start to shoot that ball and then to hold up and then come back, sometimes your timing and, and Kansas not really shooting the ball as well, I think. We keyed on that matchup between Dryling and Hill, and very early Hill had a couple fouls. It was seemingly the same old story with him. But then uh, a couple other things happened. Hornacek got hot. He's been hot for the last five games. Barry Stevens went to work a little bit as well. And uh, pressure defense. Iowa State uh, was able to cause some turnovers and uh, uh, get some uh, steals and get some points off of that. And Kansas not hitting uh, as well. I don't know what the percentage show. Neither club were shooting as well as they have on the year. Just before the first half ended, Barry Stevens hit for his eighth point of the contest, and that gives him 2,000 points, and we'll take another look. That's a boatload of points, and that's from his... His favorite spot along the baseline. He just went, took it on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation there, up and down. And as I said, he's got a chance to move into number two spot before the season's over. Only the third player in Big 8 history. Again, the halftime score, 35-28. Iowa State leading Kansas, and we'll be right back after this message. <laughs> to take a closer look at the Big 8 University we're visiting. Today, a report from Iowa State University. Scoring leaders, of course, Wayman Tisdale of Oklahoma leads the pack with a 25.8 point per game average, followed by Nebraska's Dave Hoppin. And two of the principals in today's games, Barry Stevens was only 9 for 36 coming in today's game, 25 points on the last two games, and Ron Kellogg coming off a subpar performance, 2 for 7 for Missouri, but 17 for 27 against Memphis State. They're followed by Malcolm Thomas, Jeff Strong, and Randy Downs. Seven-point ball game at the half. Iowa State 35 and Kansas 28. Well, Gary, we have two clubs here, two very good shooting teams, and they're a little bit uh, off their usual performance. And that tends to take away from the game always, I think, when you're not shooting well. You see Kansas with just 42%. Iowa State brought it back 48%. Uh, one of the big things has got to be rebounding. Iowa State uh, out-rebounding Kansas 17 to 14, and then in the turnovers, Kansas has turned it over seven uh, times to Iowa State's four. But uh, the second and third, or first and third leading scorers uh, for Kansas, Peck Thompson might be number two now. Uh, Kellogg and Thompson were only three out of 11 uh, in the first half. And uh, there you see the points for Kansas, Manning 11, Dryling 9, and there's Thompson and Kellogg with six points between them, and, and Hunter with two. And while Barry Stevens had, again, a cold shooting, three for 10, Grayer and Hornacek have really picked up the slack offensively. So Iowa State with two men in double figures. Kansas has one man in the rebounding department. Jeff Grayer not only has 11 points, but he has seven rebounds as Iowa State has out-rebounded Kansas by three. 17 to 14. And I bet if you were to ask a fan watching this game if, if Grayer had 11 points and 7 rebounds, you'd never guess it. He's just the kind of player that moves along. He's not flashy. He just does a great job. He's a solid player and an exceptional player for a freshman. In fact, Larry Brown was visiting with me about him before the game and the job that he's done. Take a quick look at the standings in the Big 8. There's Oklahoma top with a Perfect mark of 9-0, Kansas 7-2. Iowa State here tied with Nebraska for fourth at 4-5. Four and, and the women's standings, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State and Missouri, 7-2. Kansas 6-3, and, and you see Iowa State's women's team, 1-8. We're just seconds away from second half action. And, of course, we have... Uh, a game following this one in the Big 8 today, a doubleheader Saturday on KAB Sports. Steve Grant and Glenn Potter will be along a bit later. Oklahoma and Missouri immediately following our game on most of these same stations. The way I imagine Kansas fans are hoping uh, we're looking towards that second game uh, with Oklahoma and Missouri, hoping that Missouri can knock off Oklahoma. But first, they have their work cut out here today against Iowa State because Iowa State, having lost three, coming back has the Jayhawks down by seven. And realistically, if Kansas is going to make a run at Oklahoma, they 
this one. It's a big game for both these clubs. Iowa State would like to get it to be able to contend for third position. A win would put them right back in the battle uh, with Missouri. And, of course, as you said, Kansas, I think, has to win this ball game to stay in for a fight for the championship with Oklahoma. Kansas opens the second half with the basketball. Ron Kellogg underneath with Dryling. He puts it up and in. Sam Hill. So on the opening seconds of the second half, Dryling puts in two and Hill is charged with his third personal foul. Let's see the play and the job with Sam Hill comes across here. Right there, he can't beat him to the front. In my opinion, right there, he should have come over the backside. Make him turn inside where he might get some help. You see there, he, is, he hasn't got him in any shape to do a good job of getting inside and start back attacking uh, right where they started this ball game. Dryling makes the three-point play and now it's a four-point game. 35-31, and that's 12 for Dryland. That's a big lift. You're down by seven, and to come right off the start the half and uh, get a three-pointer right off the uh, out of the box. Gary Tompkins for Iowa State. Corner set. Gary Stevens. Corner set. Kansas still sitting there in the one one three one zone. Kellogg on the baseline. Tompkins. Hold a sec. We're down to nine seconds on the shot clock. Stevens baseline tries to drop it off underneath. Picked away by Hunter. But a whistle and the ball belongs to Iowa State. Let's take another look. Well, the clock started to run down. Barry Stevens made his drive. He goes up. Dryling keeps his hands out. If somebody hits it from behind, Hunter tries to save it and uh, evidently stepped on the line, or he could have possibly even bounced the ball on the line when he when he saved it back coming in bounds. Hornacek will initiate the inbounds. Baseline, left side of the glass. Johnny Orr got to feel pretty good in the first half again with his superstar, uh, Stevens, not shooting the ball well, three out of ten, and to have a seven-point lead. Hopkins pass picked off. Iowa State back down, and Hunter Boy, is that makes it a two-point game. Break. Two on, uh, two on one there. Pass the ball real quick, and that's the quickest way to get it there. Well, that seven-point lead has dis disappeared in a hurry. It's down to just two. One sec from outside. Back to the rim and down to Kellogg. Kellogg to Hunter. He was slowed there by Greer. Driving inside in heavy traffic. Picked away by Hornacek, and now Tompkins back the other way. Tompkins to Hornacek, underneath, up and in. Great job of transition again by Iowa State on the other end. All started by Hornacek. He, I don't know whether he'd get credit for the steal there, but he deflected it away, and then a great job of filling. Really hustled by him to get down and fill the lane. 37-33, Iowa State. Dryling, ball slapped this time, and a whistle. That'll go against Gary Tompkins. Dryling's really drawing the crowd now. Uh, State be there's three around him. I think the next time that ball comes into him, it'd be wise for him to kick it right out. The other Kansas kids move a little bit and uh, get in good shooting position, look for the shot outside. Because if he doesn't kick it out, he's going to continue to have that crowd down in there. Baseline out front, the pass to Calvin Thompson. Henry Cutter. Iowa State, the man for man. They came back, the man for man really got him moving in that uh, first half. Caused the turnover. Good move there by Hunter to free himself up. 15 footer from the line, and Hunter sinks it. 37 35. That's six points for Cedric Hunter. Bill to Tompkins. Tompkins across the midcourt strike. Iowa State by two with the ball. Hornacek across the court to Barry Stevens. Down to the corner. Baseline stopped by Manning. Tompkins, Stevens again. Darts in, stops and pops, and it's good. Well, Barry gets the, the shot this time, and he's a tremendous shooter. But I think Manning played the way in the first half that I said that I thought he should do on that play. Stayed down, came late on it, uh, but Barry got the shot down. Ron Kellogg answers with two from underneath, and it's still a two-point game, 39-37. Hornacek for Iowa State, front court. Hunter trying to put uh, some pressure on Hornacek as he brings the ball up, and then once he gets it across the timeline, dropping back into that zone. 
Hornacek left side. At the end of the corner. Here's Stevens. And he puts it up and in. Barry Stevens. Well, Kansas wingman is going to have to get out quicker on Stevens than that because he can shoot it quick, and that's his shot. He knows no range as far as distance. And I think against the zone, you're going to have to favor out on that guy and give it to somebody else. Well, for Barry Stevens, a four-point Iowa State lead. And the trialing. Now Ron Kellogg. 41-37 to score. Cyclones out in front. Kansas Hunter starts in. Puts it up. It will not go. Underneath Manning has the ball stripped from him and a whistle and a foul coming against Jeff Gray. Kansas they done a good job coming back and that might be real critical, but right now in their offense at last time, not like they're moving real crisp themselves or the ball. You see Manning, the freshman, doing a great job fighting inside here, going to take it up on the reverse side. And Gray are coming in from behind right on your picture. 44 reaches in and grabs. So Danny Manning goes to the free throw line, the 6'11 freshman. Averaging 14 a game, 75% from the line. Five for seven in the field in the first half, four rebounds for Manning. 41-38, as Manning sinks the first one. Well, Kansas has done what you want your club to do, and I'm sure Larry Brown is happy with it. Bases will come out, down by seven, and get back in the ball game, rather than letting Iowa State come out and spread it to, to ten. Manning converts them both, the two-point game. 13 points now for Manning. Tompkins handling the ball for Iowa State. Hornacek now Hill, baseline around dry lane. He puts it up. The left-handed shot won't go. Dreyer trying to go to the bucket. He puts it up, will not go, and Dreyer winds up on the floor. Dreyer a little hot on the call. He does it. I think he's got a drive trying to explain away from one official over here what happened that the guy hooked it. Let's see the action. Here comes Hill, hooks him right here, and this is what he was talking about, driving, complaining about. May have stepped out of bounds. I couldn't quite see. Good action here as they go up. Grayer fighting inside. Is that? Yeah, it's Grayer. Finally gets called for a foul. So Gray will go to the line. I see what Dryling, I saw him over the fish, and he went right to the fish and put his hand on his, his backside and said, here's what the man's doing to me. They hooked him back, and he did. Shot by Grayer is good. He has 12 points. The foul on Dryling, his second. He's been effective down inside, goes hard on the boards, and uh, did a good job against uh, Kansas Joe in the first half of working inside. This is the shot. Comes down to Thompson, not quickly to Kellogg. On the oh. Kansas end of the court, and Kellogg drops it how tough a shot that was because he had the angle of the basket taken away the defense and forced him out he had to bring it back with his right hand and soften it up and just fluff it up in the basket great I'm play out on the court with the score Johnny Orr the head coach at Iowa State he has 16 wins under his belt this year 16 and 9 7 of 9 losses have been the top 20 teams best Iowa State team record ever 18 and 5 back in the 1955-56 season and with 15.36 left in this game, the Cyclones lead by one, 42-41. Kansas, uh, we talked about them. Uh, they've had their first back-to-back 20-game -back season since, I think, uh, the 68 and 69 season. So Larry Brown bringing them back. Barry Stevens to Ron Virgil. Virgil, right corner, hold a sec. Against his zone now, Virgil come in, uh, comes in off the bench. Uh, he's in the 50% range shooting, and a little bit more can expect offensive production out of him than, than Gary Tompkins, the other guard who he plays. Barry Stevens misses, and Dryling clears it. Big hoop for Kansas now because they got a chance to regain the lead and get some momentum and confidence back in their club. Kellogg has ended from Manning and tipped away by Greer. Now Stevens. Well, that's that's what makes you uh, grimace when you're a coach. You look like there, you're going for the lead, and then just make a bad pass. Forty set, Virgil in the corner. Forty set. Up the line, Grayer. Grayer over driving up and in. Two more for Jeff Grayer. He's a solid performer. I can't uh, get over how well he's played with such poise and confidence for a freshman. Iowa State by three. Oh, the ball stripped from Thompson by Hornacek, but a whistle on a foul against Jeff Hornacek. We'll take another look. Oh, 
Hornacek uh, leads Iowa State in steals. Watch it right here. Woo. I don't know where he gets it, but he looks like he gets all ball right there. He's second in the league uh, in the Big A Conference in steals, and Johnny Orr not happy with that call. And, and I think as rightfully so. It looked like he got all ball. Manning. Alvin Thompson. Thompson squares up and puts it up and in. They've got to get something out of him if Iowa State can, continues to really drop inside. Uh, he said he's been shooting well last five games, almost 60%, only one out of six in the first half. 44-43, Iowa State. Hill over Dryley, up and in for Sam Hill. Dryley's more or less giving Hill that shot when he gets in. He's really not crowding him. The ball gets in there, he's not getting him up tough, and he's giving him a lot of, giving him a lot of room. Well, kept away momentarily. Here's Stevens going for a steal, and the ball goes out of bounds belonging to Kansas. And Iowa State pressure right here again. Almost uh, two steals in a row. Almost doesn't qu uh, quite count if you're an Iowa State fan. Cedric Cunner with a basketball for the Jayhawks. Good J.C. Linebacker. has seen something, whether it's a clock or it might be. Well, they want to change the shot clock, I think, here. Well, they, I noticed it's on 40. I know there was more time run off than that. So uh, what they did was reset the rule that there wasn't uh, possession on the play. So they'll set it to 30 seconds. And Ron Kellogg, the junior out of Omaha, Kansas set up on the block or uh, on the line here now with Dryland. Hunter looking for Manning to break out, I think, and he threw the ball behind him. I had talked to Larry Brown before the game, and I, I thought I saw him getting a, a key over there for a particular play, and that's what I was looking for, but field goal. <laughs> through the end zone, and so we'll put it at the 20. 13-18. State 46, and Kansas 43. Kansas with 10 turnovers. Iowa State with five. And look at that 10 to 5. I mentioned earlier that uh, Kansas had a problem down in Missouri, particularly on the fast break in the first half of that game. They committed uh, 18 in that game, uh, so they're about on that same pace for this game. Sam Hill with the basketball, and he draws the foul against Greg Dryling. So that'll be three fouls against Dryling. He's shrugging his shoulders there and say, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing if you hit the foul. And the Grayer. Stevens out front. Ron Virgil. Out of set. Over the left side. Curves up. Out of Virgil. Right side, Stevens. There's a good oh, Look think. at that give to Grayer. And the shot won't go. Driving to the rebound. I think that's a place to give that ball. Stevens just about picked it away from Kellogg. Turner up with a loose ball for Kansas. That hunter is quick, too, I tell you. Little guy can really screw it. Now Kansas wants a timeout with 12 minutes and 24 seconds left. Iowa State is out in front. It's a 46 to 43 ball game on this Kansas timeout. We'll take a break and be back in a moment tournament flavor by purchasing a souvenir program full of interesting facts and statistics on all the conference men and women's teams. You can get a program by sending $3 to Big 8 Program, 600 East 8th Street, Kansas City, Missouri, 64106. Both clubs shooting 50% uh, now, and there's the matchup of the two centers, Dryling and Hill. Dryling uh, still owning the advantage, 12.6 uh, rebounds. Hill, six points and four rebounds. But Kansas come back on the rebounding right now. They moved ahead 19 to 8, but their big bugaboo for Kansas has been those turnovers. They turned it over 10 to Iowa State's five. Here's a shot from Kellogg, and it's good. Ron Kellogg from the left side. Just a little penetration that time by Manning. Pulled the defensive man. Kellogg did a good job of sliding away. Got the pass to him and able to get the 18-20 uh, footer down. 46-45. Iowa State by one. 
Corner sec. Barry Stevens in the corner. You got uh, Manning, the right man, over in his wing against uh, Stevens. Is Manning with 6'11 and good reach is going to be a some target to have to shoot over. Now Manning kicks the ball away on the pass intended low for Jeff Greer. Well, we can understand why Kansas brought that field goal shooting percentage back. They're seven to eight in this half. Into Greer. Corner sack. Corner Stevens out front. Corner sack. Stevens floating along that left sideline. Corner sack low for Virgil. Baseline underneath. Stevens. Hornacek top of the key. He'll pump. It's good. Hornacek with two. Good cover up by Kansas as Barry went for the drive. They doubled him, but they had the two best offensive players in the in the floor right there, Iowa State, and they gave it off to Hornacek and got the shot down. Underneath Thompson puts it up and in. So again, it's a one-point game as Calvin Thompson answers, and it's 48-47. Cyclones by one. Need 11 minutes to go in this ball game. Hill with the pass, sideline left. Virgil a give to Stevens underneath. Shot blocked by Dryling, and he got him. Dryling's going to be assessed with another foul, and that will be four on him. Well, Virgil does a great job here, I think. It's the little things of the game. After he beats the pressure, he takes it right into the middle and penetrates and was able to dish off right here to Barry Stevens. He goes up, and boy, Dryling, that looks like he gets all ball right there. You can't see it. Let's see if we can see any body here. Oh, boy, Dryling gets a clean block right there, and uh, this is a break for Iowa State and Barry Stevens. See Dryling going away. He can't believe it. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Dryling leaves the game. Tad Boyle reports in. So Dryling's on the bench with four fouls here with 10.53 to play. Dryling, look at him, still shaking his head. He cannot believe it, and I can't either on that call because his body was away from the guy and he had all ball. Boy, Stevens and Iowa State got a break there. That ball circled the rim, bounced all over the rim, and finally fell through. 49-47. He converts them both. That's 14 for Barry Stevens. Run pillow through the middle and back out again. And Barry, uh, he has not been over 20 points in his last four games. So at 14 today, he might finally break through. We, we mentioned he's been struggling a little bit offensively. Boyle tried to get it low to Manning, and a whistle and a foul, and this one will go against Hill. So that'll be the fourth foul on Sam Hill, or is it the third? That's his fourth up That's on the board fourth. officially. Sam Hill out, Tom Peterson in, Peterson handling the ball. Now Virgil, on court for Iowa State. Iowa State fans would look to have a repeat by Tom Peterson of his performance against Oklahoma. He came in for Hill in the first half and just did an excellent job along with Dave Moss. They combined in that ball game. There, Lowe Stevens, baseline look, move up and in. Barry Stevens. He is tough one on one. 52 49. 16 for Stevens. Iowa State by three. Thompson baseline. Jeffrey left side won't go. Ron Virgil with a big rebound for Iowa State. 
everything but the two points there. He does a good change-up dribble on Peterson, takes him to baseline, and then squares up, just does not get the shot down. There's a good move. Well, for Freyer, on a sec, he'll put it up. And in. Good job going inside, outside. Freyer with him stacking on him, kicking back up. Iowa State has a five-point lead. 16 for Hornacek, 54-49 the score. 8.52 left. Turner in trouble. Ball on the court will have a jump ball. Virgil again in the middle of the action on that jump ball. And it'll go to Iowa State. You know, I think maybe trying a little bit too hard and too fast to get back in it again. And I thought this is what happened with Kansas in the Missouri game. When Missouri made a little run, they tried to right now come down quick and get in instead of have some patience. And Hunter that time, taking the ball, he didn't keep the dribble low, but out of trouble, but he was into a lot of traffic and finally gets the jump ball situation. I think Hunter came away with uh, a cut out of all that action. It looks like a couple of Jayhawks on the bench are looking at him. Yeah, they're, they're working. We see right through there. They're working on his eye. That's not enough to stop Hunter, though. He'll be back yet. Meanwhile, Mark Turgeon prepares to report into the game. So Turgeon will replace Hunter. Iowa State has the basketball. Hornacek, backcourt. There's a smart job by Hornacek. They came up to double. He brought it to a halt, backed it up. So that way he has a chance to uh, bring an offensive player up where he can get it to or stay out of the trap. Stevens, left side line. Hornacek looking it over. Virgil. Hornacek. Greer. Stevens in the corner. Hornacek. Virgil. Iowa State with a pretty good offensive lineup in there right now. Virgil's pivot foot slipped, and the ball goes back to Kansas. As far as offense, I mean, with the, with the shooters out there against the zone from the outside, Virgil, uh, all four guys, Peterson, probably the only guy uh, that consistently won't go outside. Virgil went for it for Kansas. Here's the score. We have 8.05 left. Uh, the turnover, and Iowa State gets it back. Came out strong, but they have really hit a dead spot right now. It's unbelievable right there, just to cough it up and out of bounds. And I was just going to say, they, they need a basket in that possession to quiet this Iowa State crowd down a little bit. There's the turnover situation. Virgil. It rolls off. Manning with a rebound. Deep pass for Turgeon into the front court. Low Thompson puts it up, won't go, but he was fouled by Tom Peterson. Clock stops at 7.41. Peterson, the senior out of Fort Dodge, Iowa. With the Iowa State staff, Steve Antrim, uh, assistant coach on the left, Hallahan hitting behind. Look at Johnny Orr. Uh, played at Beloit College in the Beloit Hall of Fame and was coached by one of the great names that you have to be my age, I guess, maybe you'll remember uh, a guy by the name of Dolph Stanley. Here's Calvin Thompson. He puts it up and in. Good free throw shooter, Calvin Thompson. 82 plus percent. We've said several times during the year, I think, uh, has Kansas free throw record of 33 straight. It's good. Thompson converts them both. 54-51. 7.41 left in the game. Iowa State on top, and we'll be right back in just a moment. 7.41 left in the contest. Both big men in this game. Sam Hill of Iowa State and Greg Dryling of Kansas with four fouls. Dryling picked up number four with 10.53 left, and then Hill picked up number four about 30 seconds later. I think Iowa State has done a good job of penetrating against the zone with their people of making a penetration in. You can't drive all the way to the basket to force the zone to come and then pitching out to the open shooter and they've been hitting the shot real well. Or going inside to Grayer who's been able to operate a little inside or if they double him, he's kicked back out to the shooter. They've been attacking it real well in the second half. Stevens works it through the backcourt against Tad Boyle. Now to hold a set. After a minute, Larry Brown might be deciding to change the tempo of the game by going man for man, but uh, they drop back in the zone. Goes to Virgil, Hornacek, up from 18, and it's good. 
Jeff Hornacek, a 60% shooter in his last five games, has 18 points in this game. And again, I think the Kansas zone not moving as quick and strong as happened to him in Missouri, I thought, a little bit. The same thing there. Boyle not reacting. You've got to know where the shooters are and get to them in a hurry. Boyle well, goes to the baseline and draws the foul against Tom Peterson. Oh, that's his second. Here's another look. Well, you see Boyle going in. is able to move back in. Getting help from across, but Peterson had already bought him a different look here. Let's see. Brings him up, gets by. Peterson trying to recover, trying to stay out of there. I don't know if this hand looked like he was moving away. And boy, uh, misses the first one. Now, he's an 84% foul shooter. Oh, Greeley, Colorado. threat but as he said at the line uh, usually come through and play pretty solid get to the ball to the people that that need to get the basketball and, and play pretty good defense 56 52 Iowa State by four Hornacek in trouble in the backcourt a pass to Virgil out of Grayer well Thompson just didn't react come quick enough on that he had a chance to make an interception or maybe get a, a charge foul Stevens jumper out of the corner will not go down ball tipped and picked up by Ron Kellogg Boyle, they just about threw it away again. Now Turgeon through his hands, and he goes back to the midcourt strike to get it. <laughs> you wonder what's happening with Kansas. It's like they're not really sharp or alert. Ron Kellogg, baseline around Breyer, cut off by Hornacek. Manning, he'll put it up over Peterson, and it's good. Well, Kansas gets to the basket right there, but Hornacek probably saved one. He comes clear off from the other side. He's covering Turgeon. As I said, he plays the game for what it's worth, and uh, he's playing every basket and every possession if it's the last one. The bucket for Manning gives him 17. What a sec for the basketball for Iowa State. Off to the corner to Stevens, and up and in. Barry Stevens. Yes. I think somebody in that zone has got to make a defensive fake in the penetration. Good penetration by Iowa State again, a kick out. I think he's got to fake that, that uh, fill in the middle and get back to Barry, because he's the type of guy, even though he hasn't shot well the last couple games, he's he can just knock it dead on it. I think Kansas State's leaving, or Kansas leaving him too much room. Thompson, a move inside. Hooks it up, will not go. On rebound, back up and in. Calvin Thompson for Kansas. Good job by Calvin that time, going up and down uh, for the ball. 58-56, Iowa State by two. <laughs> Stevens, DeGrayer, Peterson to the bucket up and in. Tom Peterson with his first bucket. 60-56. Good ball handling. They had a two-on-one situation. Good awareness by Grayer there to get the open man. Not wait and try and take it to the basket himself. He had him open for the layup. Calvin Thompson and a whistle over there with 5.08. Sam Hill and Greg Dreiling are going to report back at this point. Five minutes and eight seconds left to go. Cal Calvin Thompson trying to get Kansas back in the game. This is moments ago. You'll see him takes the ball down, steps in between, goes up. Now he's through the defense, is able there to react, and I said up and down with him, gets his feet planted under him solid, then takes it up strong for two. And while it hasn't seemed like Kansas has played that well, there's still only four down. Foul was called against Ron Virgil, a timeout on the court, and we'll be back after this. Five minutes, eight seconds left. Here's the foul against Virgil on Thompson. Well, as you said, Calvin Thompson has really gotten active in the last uh, three, four minutes of this basketball game and starting to get more into the game. At least that's my feeling. Iowa State bench. So Calvin Thompson will go to the line. Iowa State led by seven at the half, 35-28. There's Thompson. 23 of 25 free throws coming into this one. And he misses. Kellogg with the rebound and a whistle underneath as he tried to take it back up. And it's against Hill. Well, that's a big rebound by Kellogg. There's Sam. We've seen that uh, expression and uh, scene before where he walks off and just disappointed as heck. I think it was at Kansas, uh, maybe, as I recall, where he went over and hung on to the basketball support. But uh, this will be his ninth game that he's gone out. Let's see, Kellogg, you see, he slipped in off the lane, got inside right here, 
And let's see where Hill, there's Hill going up. Now Hill right here in the ball game, I'm thinking, if he is important, got to stay in the game, he's got to come off and let him take it up right there. Either let somebody else get it, the foul or the block, but stay away. As he's in a position, he's behind. Uh, most times, nine out of 10 times, you're going to get nothing but a foul. So Sam Hill fouls out with 5.06 left. And Brad Dudek reports in to replace him. This is almost a uh, replay of the Kansas game that Lawrence Iowa State was up, and uh, Sam Hill went out with about eight minutes to play, and then Kansas kind of took over, and Manning in that one uh, scored the last 12 points for Kansas. Kellogg with 11. Big Ben 12 as he converts them both at 60-58. left to go in the ball game. Stevens in the backcourt against Ron Kellogg. Really a big game for both clubs when you look at, at the standings. Iowa State uh, for them I think to battle and be able to finish uh, as high as third with Missouri and uh, Kansas uh, trying to keep up there with Oklahoma and fight for, for a championship. Ron Virgil, six point junior out of Chicago. J.C. Leinbach, Fisher coming over making the call. Here's Dreyer coming through, dribbles up one, looks, defensive backs off, takes the shot, goes up and down, and we must have had a foul away from the ball because uh, Iowa State uh, is playing the ball inbound. So this is a great break for Iowa State. And a foul against Manning, his third. Iowa State leading 62-58 with a basketball. set. Ron Virgil. Steven. The jumper will not go down. Virgil kicks it away. Ball goes out of bounds belonging to Kansas. Well, Kansas didn't get hurt on that. Uh, it could have been a four-point play and a big one and moved out to a six-point lead. So they get a break there with Iowa State not able to score and take advantage of it. Thompson with the basketball. Down to Ron Kellogg. Turgeon low for driving. Working against Dudak and driving puts it up and in. Dudek without the experience. They go down there man for man now against him. Uh, I think uh, Dryling or any one of the big kids will, will hurt him. 14 for Dryling, a two-point lead. This is Virgil making it four for Iowa State. Good play by Virgil. No hesitation. He had the wide open shot from about 10 feet and took it right up. Manning for Kansas to kill off. Thompson, oh, he loses the ball, and Virgil comes up with it ahead. He goes to Stevens, and the ball oh. slapped away by Turgeon, and Turgeon will be assessed to foul. He gets the foul, but a great hustle by the little guy Turgeon there. It was a cinch, too. Stevens, a good free throw shooter, but now he's got to go to the line and make it. It was the kind of play that would have really brought the crowd up had he gone up and been able to jam it. But he comes through there, breaks him across the arm, throws up the official right on it, makes the call. But it was the kind of play that could really get the crowd up for Iowa State. This way, it kind of keeps it down, and he has to go to the line and make the two. Barry Stevens at the line. That gives him 19 today. Iowa State now has beat him down on transition. The last time when they were able to set up, it looked like uh, Kansas went back maybe to a box and one with uh, Kellogg shadowing on uh, Stevens' man for man. Well, Stevens hits the 20 mark, and Iowa State is up by six. Mark Turgeon for the Jayhawks into the front court. Now Kellogg, Dryling puts it up and in. There's no way. Uh, we're going to have to get help back in there and make a substitute. Maybe Moss is a little bit more experienced. Well, uh, I don't want to say I call it. Moss is getting up. But I said before he, he went over there because there's no way to do that. He hasn't played. Uh, I'd have to go back and check. But I bet he hasn't been in the last uh, seven or eight games. Virgil. What is that? Virgil in that right corner. What is that guy front? 248 left to play in the game. I'm looking at Kellogg, and uh, they're back to zone. Stevens missing from oh, long range. What a smart, Thompson. excuse me, Dwayne, but a smart tip by Manning. Kellogg stopped by Stevens, and the ball goes out of bounds across the baseline, belonging to Kansas. Now Dudek leaves, and David Moss reports in with 2.35 left. 
Kellogg's kind of this type of player, but seemed, man, like he was nonchalant with that ball right there. Uh, I think that's kind of his personality. Inbound to Manning. He takes it to the bucket and misses the shot. Dryling tries to go back up with it. We have a whistle. Well, it might have been Dryling right there. He may have had some people hanging on to him, but he put the ball down on the floor. I think if he'd have just taken up and been able to jam it, he probably got a three-pointer. Let's watch it here. He goes up. Dryling with a good offensive foul. Gets down. Now tries to get himself. Has to put it down, and they tie him up and get the foul. And uh, I thought maybe he could have, maybe he had to get his step in there to get the ball up, put that ball down the floor. Well, Virgil charged with the foul, his second. Now Dryling goes to the line to shoot a one and one. That will give him 17 today. His high in the conference is 20 against Oklahoma. He had 30 earlier this year against South Alabama. That's two clutch free throws if he gets this one down. And he makes them both. It's a two-pointer, 66-64. Iowa State out in front. Warnasek backcourt, Barry Stevens. Across the timeline. Let's see if this brought up a little heavier on Stevens. I think Iowa State's going to run, uh, run clock. Virgil, across the court to Stevens. Well for Crayer. Stevens. Here's Hornacek, 20 on the shot clock. Hornacek out front, less than two to go in the game. Hornacek in, off to Stevens, out of the corner, and Barry Stevens hits with nine seconds left on the shot clock. That's what I'm talking about, penetration right there. The wingman is not, I think you have to respect Stevens. That's one guy you cannot let shoot. I don't care if it's from the, that distance or not. I think you have to get out and cover that wing. 22 for Stevens in this game. And I'm sure Larry Brown has told him that, but they're just not reacting. Manning will get credit for the bucket, and Kansas wants a timeout, so it's a two-point game here at Ames, 68-66, with a minute 43 left. Kansas calls for a timeout, and we're going to go to Columbia. We have a big eight doubleheader on tap today. Oklahoma and Missouri standing by. Steve Grant and Glenn Potter from Columbia. Iowa, Iowa State 68 and Kansas 66. Kansas looking for their eighth win in the conference. Iowa State looking for victory number five in league play. Look at Kansas, 58% shooting. They're out rebounding Iowa State right now, 27 to 19. They trail in the ball game here by two, but the difference is those turnovers, 15 to six, and several of them in the second half have been unforced. But Iowa State shooting well at 55%. Iowa State has the basketball. Hornacek will inbound. With Hornacek, Virgil. Stevens, Greer, and Moss in the game for Iowa State. Kansas with Turgeon, Thompson, Driving, Kellogg, and Manning. And I think Iowa State, or excuse me, Kansas right now, well, they're, they're trapping the, right now in the corner. I was going to say, I think they have to flex out, get out, and get beat inside. Moss tries to put it up, and he is fouled, and that's going to be against Driving, I think. I think Driving got it from the side. the case with driving here going after you're down to game time minute and, uh, 19 to play you can't give up anything you have to make Iowa State earn it and this is the case even though it's his fifth uh, you've got to play the game out it's done a good job and the key there to bring Kansas in was they went right to driving on Dudek who's inexperienced as I said and uh, he was able to keep him within range two big free throws by Moss who's not an exceptionally good free throw shooter at 65 percent the 6'9 junior out of Franklin Park, Illinois. Puts it up and in. So Moss goes into the scorebook for the first time today, and he makes it 69-66, Iowa State. He converts them both. Well, he may have made two of his biggest free throws of the year. Four-point ball game. Turgeon for the Jayhawks. Out of Boyle, Turgeon puts it up and in. The little guard makes it a two-point game again. Second. We'll take another look. We have a minute and ten 
seconds left in this game. Here's the shot by Turgeon. Turgeon, who hasn't been shooting well, takes it right in flow, right in front, good rhythm. And you see Kellogg coming out of there, pushed between the, uh, the double team, trying to get that offensive board, getting called. And, and now you've got uh, Gray or Stevens tries to get out on the line, who's an ex exceptionally good free throw shooter. Yeah, Stevens was up there, and <laughs> that caught the attention of Larry Brown on the Kansas bench in a hurry. Well, you got to try and get by with some things once a while. Let the officials sort it out. Big rebound. Yeah, yeah. Manning with the rebound, and Turgeon throws the ball into the front court. A pass to Boyle. A two-point game with a minute two left to play. Kellogg inside the lane, puts it up and in, and that ties the game at 70 with 53 seconds left. And Kansas calls for another timeout. Whew. What a move. Strong move to the basket. Contact somewhere, uh, one place or another, looked like on that particular play. Let's take another look at that, Gary. This ties the game at 70 with 52 seconds left. Kellogg comes in. And there. Oh, I can't see. Somebody moves in. Uh, Grayer didn't get in there in shape, but the guy underneath looked yeah, like he might have had position. Ronnie Virgil blocked out. Here we go. Virgil sitting in there in the paint. Kellogg comes in. Let's watch now. Virgil. Whew, Virgil looked like he was set in pretty good position on that one. A tough shot. Goes off the board. Ties the ball game 70-70. You Big see play. both officials on the left side of your screen. I think they were screened from that yeah. play. 52 seconds left. We're all knotted at 70 as Kansas has called for a timeout. Dwayne, you know, breaks are an important part of the game. And I'm looking at Kansas after uh, the, the play before this where they hit the shot and wanted a timeout. Turgeon went to call time. They got the foul on Kellogg. Now instead of having to waste the timeout, they come to the other end. They get the missed free throw. So they're able to actually save them, uh, themselves a timeout, and they elected to use it here after tying the ball game 70 to 70. We have not seen Cedric Hunter since he sustained a little cut over his left eye. And he will not return to the game. Turgeon, Boyle, Manning, Thompson, and Kellogg for the Jayhawks. Cyclones have Tom Peterson entering the game, replacing David Moss. Hornacek, Virgil, Stevens, and Grayer round out the Iowa State Five here with 52 seconds left on the clock. A tie game, and Iowa State has the basketball. You mentioned Turgeon hadn't scored in the last couple ball games, but he hit that shot that brought him back to two the time before and really didn't hesitate. And he got it right inside the top of the circle, wide open. He took it up. Ron Virgil out front. Now we've got, there's a difference of uh, about six seconds on the 45 second clock in the game clock. Right? I'm sure Iowa State's going to run it down as far as they can go. And I do not have the official timeout situation. Maybe we can pick it up here during this break. We have 13 seconds left on the shot clock as Iowa State has called for a timeout. 13 seconds on the shot clock, 19 seconds on the game, and we'll be back after this. Thirteen seconds left on the shot clock. Nineteen seconds left on the game. Kansas tied it with 52 seconds left. We're knotted at 70. Kansas, as we were given, it has two uh, timeouts left. Iowa State, one timeout uh, remaining as we wind down, so they will have time, regardless of what happens with Iowa State, if they shoot the ball, they'll have time to do something with it. I'd look for Stevens maybe to run. Now we have seven seconds left on that shot clock. Hornacek inside tries to put it up and oh, does. oh what a recovery by Hornacek to put it up and in good With four seconds left Kansas calling for a timeout they've lost two more seconds off the clock before they get the timeout we have two seconds left on the clock with Iowa State leading 72 to 70 and Larry Brown wants time on the clock he wants more time than just two seconds right he's he's going after it and uh, we'll see what happens I really feel he deserves more than the two seconds up because they were calling the timeout down here deep. And the fish officials are conferring now about what's going to happen. I think he should at least have four seconds on the clock. I would say in that rate, uh, in the four-second range, is going to be a fair if they put four seconds back on. We That's talked about breaks. Hornacek gets the break. They open it up for him. Flair Stevens out of way, maybe to draw away out on him. Hornacek penetrates, gets the ball blocked in there, and he knocked around right back to him. you got to give him credit to have good hands to recover and then put it up. Brown is lobbying for five seconds. Here's another look. 
look at the Hornacek bucket. Now the middle's open. He goes through. They come across. Hit the ball right there. Bounces away. Comes right to him. He's able to get it. And again, that little jump, one-hand shot that I've talked about him so many times, and he's so skilled at doing, he gets up off the glass. And when that ball went through, he had maybe a second left on that shot clock. Seven seconds left on the game clock. So he did. He had one second left on the shot clock. That's right. Then you saw the clock in there, seven. So the time they kick out, well, they put three. Uh, five and he's calling timeout right here and it's on four so, and the officials coming in here so by that uh, he probably should have had four seconds now, if we were right on the timeouts they've got one left I'm wondering if Kansas might look to go about with a long court pass or get it down and call another timeout get it in the offensive end Closing up. Come on, to get the jump. Into Hornacek. And the Thompson and Thompson shot from long range will not go at the buzzer. And that is it. Iowa State has beaten Kansas. 72 70 the final. Hornacek with seven seconds left put through the final two. And the Cyclones win it. We'll be back in just one moment. Beats Kansas 72-70 as Jeff Hornacek put down the final two. For Gary Thompson, this is Dwayne Stats. Nice to have you with us. Hope you've enjoyed this afternoon's game one of the Big 8 doubleheader. Big 8 basketball is a production of Cat Sports and Anheuser-Busch Sports Production. Final score, Iowa State 72, Kansas 70.